Hello, everybody, and welcome to your Bologna solo guide. So you do have the option on Bologna. Uh, if you really want to, you could go uh, that death's toll route on her and grab that uh, as your starter in order to uh, kind of sustain up over in the solo lane a little bit more. Uh, I actually prefer the Warrior's Axe on Bologna. Uh, and when you're going to get Warrior's Axe on solo laners, you basically start with the Fighter's Mask first. So you can actually have some clear, and then we're going to work our way into that Sundering Axe later. Uh, we are going to be building a fair amount of protections here and just kind of abusing that axe. Uh, Bologna right now is a solo laner she can't really play anywhere else i mean you could probably have a little bit of fun with her in the jungle uh, but she is mostly a solo laner and i would kind of say that she is all right uh, she is certainly not a top tier solo laner you're not gonna see her a bunch uh, mostly because she is kind of a more auto attack focused solo laner uh, and the auto attacky solo laner builds are not uh crazy strong right now uh you're much more likely to see the ability of based uh solo laners right now uh the kind of kukulans of the world because those items the kind of like cdr protectiony uh like peridvins of the world are more so where the solo lane is currently at in terms of meta let's go team so at level one, we are of course gonna grab our hammer and we're gonna grab that hammer because it is going to be our main form of wave clear. I do not uh, max out the hammer first or anything. Uh, I actually think that it is arguably Bologna's worst ability uh, just because it is uh, so easily interruptible by getting it at level one will give you those aoe autos and you're going to continue to utilize those aoe autos in order to clear the wave efficiently now i can actually use my whip in order to be able to auto attack nike outside of her shield range uh which brings up a good point for whip i do believe that whip is Bologna's best ability this is going to be the one that we are maxing out first when you are actually inside of that whip stance you are going to get a slightly increased range on your auto attacks uh so they extend out just a little bit right there plus four on that basic attack range it's a disarm you get sustain off of this the more that you rank it up the lesser the cooldown is gonna be you get extra healing extra disarm extra damage you just get so much value for ranking up this ability and it's not like you can interrupt it either so i almost always rank up the whip first on Bologna, just because it's useful in basically every single situation now for my active this game, I made sure to get a Sunder. Uh, Sunder will be getting nerfed uh, towards the end of August, and I don't think it's going to be a uh, particularly popular pickup anymore. But this game, I am against a Nike, and you will always want to buy a Sunder against a Nike. Uh, you can make an argument to get it as a second relic. Uh, but I much prefer to have it right away so I can get rid of Nike's ultimate. The second she ulties, I want to be able to sunder her and get rid of that ultimate. Now I'm going to back up. I'm going to go right into that warrior's axe so I can start to get that proc. And I'm going to head myself into a mystical male. Physical soul laner that I'm against physical jungler that i'm against with the nemesis mystical male is going to provide us a lot of damage you combine a little bit of a warrior's axe proc with a little bit of mystical male proc and all of a sudden you've got a lot of damage coming out just from kind of side items so as far as the official level order goes on Bologna, we're going to rank up our ultimate whenever we can it's going to give us a bunch of fantastic stats for leveling up that ultimate. We get extra damage and protections. It's going to increase that buff that you get for being inside of the Bologna ultimate range. 
So we want to make sure we get that all ranked up. At this point, I'm going to be saving my Sunders, by the way, in lane until Nike ulties. That way I can immediately get rid of it. After the ulti, we're ranking up that whip for the damage and the disarm duration. Then you have a choice between leveling up the two and the one. I usually end up just leveling uh, the one in order to get the slow leveled up to increase my PVP kill potential. Uh, I find that that's more helpful. It's also going to be getting a slight scaling buff in the next patch as well. So it's gonna be hitting even harder, uh, but you can rank up the hammer if you so desire for that big bludgeon damage. I just always expect the enemy uh, to be able to basically interrupt it. And so I only use it for the most part for those AOE auto attacks. So that would be ultimate three, one, two on the Bologna leveling order. As far as our build is concerned, the builds are going to be a little bit funky. Um, our team this game is a decently auto attack heavy, which is kind of nice for us because we're going to be able to embrace a couple of items uh, that are going to help us a little bit on that auto attack path uh, and also kind of have it be a little bit of a team build. Uh, things like Shogun's Kusaris, which will give us that faster auto attack speed, which is nice because that faster auto attack speed is going to give us stuff like a quicker healing speed. Uh, so if we were with a composition that really didn't have any good auto attack users It would kind of make our build a little bit more awkward because we do want some of those Aura items that are going to help out the whole team in general, especially those hunters that are uh, Building that silver branch bow right now Ooh, Baby that's some good stuff so for as far as their magic damage is concerned, they've got a soul and a Athena. I'm probably not going to be dealing with them until a little bit later. So for our next item, we're going to get ourselves a void shield, get out some of that AOE penetration for the team, and then work our way into that show guns Kusari. So we get that additional attack speed. Now, Bologna is a little bit different uh, than some of the other gods because a lot of gods will just have like a... Uh, kind of traditional rotation that you just kind of go through the motions every time you like you just go like three two one three two one and it's just kind of something that you always do on Bologna that's not necessarily the case um, because her abilities are a more situational and so you don't necessarily always want to use them in a particular order. Made sure to save that Sunder for her. Gonna switch over and kind of smash down on this nemesis. Looks like that's an Athena ulti coming in. I should be ulti up on top. Also start tanking this tower for my Wheelix, which is hopefully gonna be enough to keep him alive. And it looks like it is gonna be able to. Saving that point, of course, at level eight. So we can rank up our whip and our ultimate at the same time. So with Bologna, you need to be thinking more about um, the situation that you are in for utilizing your abilities. Uh, do you need AOE ham uh, AOE autos because you're PVEing of some sort? You're probably going to use the hammer. Or is there a bunch of people grouped up? and they do not have a way to interrupt your hammer, then you're gonna wanna use it for the burst damage. Is an enemy running away from you? Slash, do you need a very small amount of room in order to engage? Good chance you're gonna be using the one. Do you need to finish off an enemy? Slash, are you going into a boxing stage of a fight? You're gonna wanna make sure you're in your three stamps. So it's really more about where you are in the actual fight itself. You're not gonna be using them necessarily in a consistent order. So you just have to think about the situation that you're about to be in in the game, how the fight is gonna go. Of course, that three 
also extremely powerful in the late game for disarming the hunter or magical ADCs like the soul, which brings us into kind of our compositions for soul. Who do we want to be playing soul against? It's a soul, lol. Who do we want to be playing Bologna against? Soul is one of those gods. Uh, basically anybody that is a auto attack god, we would like to be playing Bologna into them. And that is because not only do we have a disarm on our three, we also have block stacks on our one. So when we make the basic attacks with our sword and shield, uh, every three successful basic attacks, we gain a stack of block. We can have up to three of those. So not only can we disarm somebody, but after we disarm them, we can go into our sword and shield stance. And so they're gonna be disarmed for a solid two seconds. And then they're gonna come out of that. And then they're gonna have to burn through two or three block stacks on top of it. So just extraordinarily annoying um, for the enemy team to have to deal with. So we wanna be going against auto attackers, whether that is a hunter, hunter is gonna be auto attacks, whether that is a, a magical auto attacker like a soul, or an Oleron, or an auto attack jungler like a Mercury or an Erling. Either way, all of those are gonna be good for us. The team comp that we're against is honestly a really, really way. good comp for Bologna to go against. Soul, Nemesis, and Artemis. Three different gods that are all basically auto attack based that we're gonna be able to do playing. quite well against. So you are gotta be careful for those more ability based characters, whether they be physical or magical, doesn't really matter. Just those physical, uh, those, those ability based characters, physical and magical, both tend to be more problematic for Bologna. For as far as gods that we would like to pair with Bologna, ironically, we like to pair her with gods that are auto attack base. Um, it's kind of ironic that we don't want to go against auto attackers, but we do want um, auto attackers on our team. I'm actually going to get a Thor into this game because I presume the soul is going to have a lot of life steal. Uh, so we're going to help lower down that life steal, be even more annoying for them to auto attack against. Uh, the reason we want to pair Bologna with auto attackers, it uh, doesn't matter what role they're in, whether it's a hunter like a Rama, uh, but we want the auto attacks on our team because we are going to have auto attack enhancements. So we're going to have that Shogun's uh, Kusari, which is going to give a bunch of auto attack to my team. We're going to try to get a Talisman of Energy, another item that's going to give out a bunch of auto attack speed to my team and of course we want the auto attack speed on Bologna because as we previously mentioned uh the one and the three have a very large auto attack component where if you if you have that increased auto attack speed you are going to be getting more life steal you are going to be getting more block stacks and just getting more value out of your uh, abilities and your individual stances so that's why you would prefer to be on a team with auto attackers because the build that you would prefer to go is going to be giving out a lot of auto attack speed to your team so if you've got some silver branch bow abusers where they are going to love the life and it also lets your support go a little bit of a different build they don't have to get some of those items so maybe they can grab something else like a pestilence if you need anti-heal and all that good stuff it's getting to objective o'clock so i need to make sure i've got sentry ward down over here on the fire giant kind of my job as a soul laner also wouldn't mind getting some aggressive wards placed down near their blue buff and in their jungle so we've got some better division knowing about rotations uh and respawns of their buffs so we can go for some jungle invades as well Uh, 
As far as our team fights are concerned, uh, Bologna does play like a traditional solo laner in that regard, uh, which means that we are going to be diving into the back line, specifically looking on Bologna for the auto attackers, which in this case happens to be both their mage and the hunter. Usually it's just going to be the hunter that you're going to end up diving in the back line. You're going to throw down all those disarms and be annoying for them. Uh, and so they're going to be your priority target just because you're so good against them. In this particular match, I can actually do that to both the mid laner and the ADC because of their composition. So either way, Soul or Artemis doesn't really matter to me who's first. Either way, they are going to be a good target. Now waiting for the Nike to ulti. She's not even going to be able to get off in time. Gonna call for that giant. fire giant. We've got all five people here. We've got Emoja for sustain, and I should be able to tank it and utilize my whip for some extra sustain on myself as well in order to tank this early fire giant. Grab ourselves a nice early fire giant. Burn that down real speedy like. And at this point, we're just kind of chillaxing, waiting for everybody to back up. Get their items online. And then we can start shoving down these tier twos and maybe even some phoenixes. Here, a soul over here, so I'm just gonna kind of W key right on into him. You can see how scared he is already. I should probably be a little bit careful here. That's honestly a little bit deep. I'm gonna pop my thorns and just kind of turn around on him. I have to wait for the nemesis to ulti me first in order to get the CC immunity right there uh, for her slow. Holy cow, there's a theater here. And that was honestly a little bit greedy of me. I thought I still had my uh, Yamoja with me over in the solo lane. And then I looked up and she was no longer there. So I should have been paying uh, more attention to the map because I thought we had a 2v3 situation going on but it was actually a 1v me situation going on right there so now i'm gonna back up buy myself a little sentry ward and a regular ward we ranked up our thorns as well which will help in those future situations as far as the rest of the build is concerned we talked about it we're gonna grab that shoguns here and then we're gonna get ourselves the talisman of energy after that this warrior's axe is going to rank up into a sundering axe, which is going to give us a little bit more sustain, which is going to pair well with our three, actually. Also, because of the extra range on whip, it makes it really, really easy to continually be proccing sundering axe every seven seconds, even in like a... Um, just like a poking manner where you're like sitting at a phoenix and nobody is diving or you're sitting around fire giant. She's really good at poking with that sundering axe also keep in mind that Bologna is really really good at taking off magis because that whip also does uh take off magi so i'm pushing up some creeps here into the mid lane although i don't really want to stay over here i just want to push up these creeps for the team i do actually want to rotate over so i'm going to go aggressively through this tower right now throw out a deep ward i'm actually going to ulti over the wall to get over here to the nike and help heal for my team so I wanted to help push up those creeps in mid, but I also know that my team needed my assistance over here. So I made sure to prioritize getting over to that Phoenix compared to like split pushing in the mid lane or something. Attack middle tower. But now we should also have some creeps all the way push up for us so we can immediately go for this mid lane push. Kind of the best of both world situations. I'm gonna walk myself right out of this Artemis. I'm gonna wait to disarm until um, I feel like both her and the soul are in a better position for me to go for, or I feel like I can finish the kill. She's gonna have to run away. Soul goes down, no problem. I'm gonna use my disarm behind me a little bit defensively. Athena's gonna try to dash away. She'll be able to finish him off with the AOE of my two. Throw down that Sunder onto the Nike. She'll be able to pick up that kill as well. Another Sunder onto the Nemesis. She has her shield up, so we're not going to be able to do anything there. But we should be able to go ahead and put this one away. 
So for your very last item on balloon, I'm gonna throw it at my ultimate right now just so we get that big AoE buff for standing inside that balloon hole. A reminder that is a full team buff for fighting inside that. So you would prefer to fight inside that buff if at all possible so you can ulti like onto a phoenix line or something when you guys are about to go for a phoenix fight and then you get that big aoe buff for the entire fight uh for the very last item you would of course sell uh that fighter's mask you never rank up the fighter's mask at the end of the game you always go ahead and sell it and you grab yourself usually another tanky style item that last item slot is always going to be dependent on the game that you're in and what everybody is playing and building so you might end up needing a spectral if they win a lot of crit you might end up needing a pestilence if they win a bunch of healing anything like that you just have to keep it in mind that last item always almost always going to be situational in solo which is actually fun because a lot of uh a lot of roles don't get situational items right now. Uh, but that is your Bologna, a solo guide. Thank you for supporting the Twitchiest community. If you'd like to see more videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel and always hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Thank you for all your support and have a twitching day, y'all.